Hi everyone and welcome. This is Lori Moore. I want to share with you how I finished up that cover that I was working on the other day. Uh, for those who were interested, I had started with this one and I went ahead and finished this off. I found it and it's full of black heavy cardstock because we're going to use it as a picture album book. But I wanted to show you how I finished that. And for the tutorial, I was creating a cover and this is how it ended up. If you were interested, um, I did some seed beads with the uh, 3D gel. And uh, so that added a lot of texture and fun on there. I also took a little acetate uh, clear sheets and stamped um, the dragonfly on there again. And so I have layered wings on the dragonflies. You can also see right there, this was the, with the 3D gel. And if I turn it just right, they just about disappear on there. Um, and so there you go. I just wanted to show you how this uh, turned out. It has some lined paper at the beginning of it. It has some white heavy cardstock in the center and then some natural colored um, cardstock at the back. So um, this will be for sale in my Etsy store. I'll have a link down below if you're interested. Also, I was trying to create a couple other albums really quick. Um, to kind of people could decorate them up how they'd like to. They just have again heavy uh, black cardstock on the inside of them so you could do what you wanted to. You could add some ribbons, you could add pockets inside. Um, I've done some stamping on this along with uh, at the corners. It's got a nice embossed um, distressing powder. This is the vintage photo at the corner of it. And I believe I have some of that in my Art Fire store as well. Um, I saw a design similar to this on Pinterest. Uh, somebody had done a layout where they had a heart with a bunch of stamping in behind it. And I just thought that was so gorgeous. I would like to um, thank whoever it was that uh, inspired it. There was no name on it and I could not find a link back to who created it. So. Um, thank you for the inspiration, whoever you were. I love that look of having the stamps um, right in behind the heart. I've added some metal embellishments here along with a cute little arrow and some eyelash trim coming off of it. So those will be for sale in my Etsy store. And now I want to share with you what I got in the, my orders. Uh, Prima came in. And so this is great. We could see all the new releases. This is the Archivist, Frank Garcia's um, design. Six double-sided designs, five sheets each, and it's in a six by six. And um, they're so sweet. I love this. I love that, you know, the look of the old advertising that they now put on the pages. And then you've got your black and white um, on the back. Really heavy pages. And let's see what other designs we've got here. Some um, floral prints and some small tag type um, ones. You could even just use it plain like that even. And look at this. Great, great, great for tags. Um, if you watch some of his um, videos, you get to see how he makes lots of mini albums out of these. They look fabulous. And here's some more of those lovely tags. And then that neat looking like almost a compass design there. And then we have um, some creams with flowers and numbers. And here's some more kind of advertisement looking type stuff with some more uh, almost like a wallpaper. And this has clocks and watches and goodies on it and old advertisements on there. And so you've got that one. We um, I wrote down the wrong number, so I ended up getting the A4 uh, paper pad instead of the 6 by 6s but I like it because look how much bigger it is. You've got this much more paper, and um, it's a little bit easier to ship than a 12 by 12 This is your Timeless Memories. Again, six double-sided designs, five sheets each. And... I personally love this a lot because you've already got your whole distressed look on the pages. Um, you're not going to have to to do a lot to uh, add that look. There's a splatters in the back of it. 
Look, you don't even need to have a whole lot of sprays. You're going to have all that look in the paper itself. Nice. Neutral backgrounds with a little bit of distressing on them. Let's see, let's see what other prints we've got in here. We've got some more that look like, like that. We've got uh, This has got a little bit of two colors on there. Again, some more of that already looks like you've inked and distressed it. You've got some uh, writing on this one some cracks. Looks like you've already added your script stamp to it. Here you got a little bit in the yellows. Another good splatter on there. Look at that. I love the distressed look in this. I can't wait to play with this. Okay, so you've got, uh, you've got that. And then we have some of our great stamps. Um, this was that one that we all played around with and talked about online. Um, the drip, paint drip stamp. Um, can't wait to play with that. It's a foam based. It's got the green rubber on the back side. And lots of detail in them. Going to be fun, 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 fun. And I just realized I don't have the butterfly stamp up here. I'm gonna have to run and go get it for you. And look at these. Say it with crystals. Oh my gosh. I, I hope, I hope you can pick this up. The texture on these. Is that not wild? It looks like scales and they feel like it. They're raised like little dragon scales or something. And iridescent and gorgeous. Look at that. I almost don't want to put these in the shop. I want to keep them all. No, I'll share with you. And the um, gels came in. We've got the, whoops, I got this on Cricut here. The soft gel. This is a nice big jar. This will take you a while to use. Creamy, nice and creamy. It's the, I got the transparent one for you. Um, this can work as a glue. It can work, uh, to put down your sugars with. You can almost use it like a varnish um, as well and um, put your microbeads in it. Speaking of which, I did get some of those. I wanted to see what they were like before I started ordering all of the different colors. So I have copper in right now and I'm super excited that I did. Look what it's doing in there. I'm going to open it very carefully and show you how tiny and delicate and cute they are. First time I opened this, um, didn't do it slow enough. Whoops, and I'm still getting them all over. This is something you need to open apparently over a container so you can dump them back in. Um, they got a little static electricity there going with them, but look how tiny and cute those are. And so shiny. They're going to be so much fun to play with. Look at that. So, yeah, I'm going to have to get more colors of those. But I thought the copper um, for a lot of the vintage looking stuff was going to work good. I also wanted to try out their glass glitter. So, so far I only have that in the pearl. And this reminds me kind of the German glass really nice nice chunky pieces this is going to be great kind of a almost a, a pearly i don't know kind of looks like broken glass <laughs> anyway that is going to be fun to play with and the sugars oh my gosh i didn't know what the sugars were going to be like either so i didn't know what colors to get i got this beautiful pink and this gorgeous um it's almost a silver and these are fantastic. The glimmer and the shine in those. I don't know if I can get that quite as down here so you can see, but oh, it's so fine and pretty. Oh my gosh, this is going to look so beautiful. You know, I'll just add a little bit of that soft gel or the 3D gel and sprinkle this over or sprinkle it in it and mix it up because it's clear. You will um, be able to see it shine clear through it. And then the other one was the Antique Silver. And this is beautiful too. Look at that. Look at those shimmers in there. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Going to be another fun one to sprinkle on things and play with. 
And of course, we've got your 3D gel. And look at all these little beads all over. <laughs> They're so tiny. I expected them to be a lot bigger than that. I did not know they were going to be that beautifully um, tiny. Let me go look really quick for the other stamp that I got. A little bit of your custom paint that is great for finishing touches. If you look at this one project here, there's like a highlight of metallic finishing on both of these, and you can get this effect, for example, mixing mica powder together with the liquid version of the gel, so the soft gel, because this is almost like acrylic binder, just a little bit more sticky. So, take another cup, and again, a new brush. Without water, it's going to be just the amount you need for the project. Mica is really, really shiny, really, really loose powder. You can use it for many ways. In many ways, one of the ways is just putting that into sprayer in the water and just spray it like any other shimmering, delicate spray. But my way of thinking is, you can also create paint out of it. So this way. It's going to be great for adding the highlights, finishing touches, or if you create a lot of this paint, you can paint the whole project the same way as you would do that paint. So, just to show you what I was doing on this one, right? Sorry. I brushed off, well, brushed, yeah, brushed off, clean off most of the paint, and it was just almost like a dry brush. And then I was dry brushing a little bit in the edges to add light and to bring the details back. Right? Almost nothing. So it's like almost like rubbing the, uh, the painting. You can do that with your fingers too if you prefer this way. So that was the technique I was using to finish this, uh, this uh, piece. The other element you can see are the micro beads. But these weren't mixed in. I just applied a little bit of the soft gel, which is basically very nice glue, and just dabbed it in the places I want to have it, making sure that all the other product is dry because microbes will stay everywhere. And then, like the embossing powder, I put a lot and then I uh, tap it off on the mat and I put it back to the jar. So this way it was finished. And as I said, the adhesive for these elements was the 3D. Um, 3D gel or the modeling paste. So you can see our gel is already turning here. here. I'll just give it another moment to dry and I'll just wait for you to show the resistance. Well, for me, the, be the best part is you just mix whatever you like, right? So it's not just you micro beads and that's it. You can put first mica, then micro beads, then maybe something more and maybe some custom options and you just choose the, th the elements you like, so the ingredients you like, and you change the basic product, very nice basic product in fact, into something more interesting. So you don't have to buy the whole jar of micro bead gel or micro bead paste. You don't have to buy the glitter paste. You just create it yourself for your own favorite cell color selection. So that should be nice. So you can see the difference between, this is the matte, 3D matte, 3D gloss. There's it's going to be almost like wax. Now I need another color to spray on the top. Very new. Sorry. may happen and the mica will be everywhere. And the great thing about mica is it's versatile. So it's great for uh, adding delicate sparkle. We've started with the selection of clothes. It's like nine colors. One is not here with us, but yes, nine of them. And there will be more colors coming. Hopefully. 
Yeah. Yeah. This is the wrong right now. Thank you. So you can see all these passengers they resist. What Let's happens? Once you get over in her area, the, you see the uh, different things. When the gel is dry, yeah, you right can right just come with a baby yes. wipe, yes. touch it a couple of times, and it's going to come off. I'm just trying to be delicate now. Not to smear it because I just want to smear it. But you can see this is great for adding dimension and uh, we can spray a couple of times so you, you have more bold pattern. For example, like the, these uh, mm, uh, circles, polka dot will be really great. You can see one color through the gel and then the other color around it. Or my suggestion was also using the um, soft, uh, soft gel as a resist. So what I was planning to do, I was planning to take one of the stamps. Right in front of you, I'm sorry. No. Stamping on it, then applying soft gel with a brush just in the place that the stamp is, and then spray another color. So you will be able to see that the stamp element is having different finishing, different colors than the uh, finished finished piece. So let's choose maybe the butterfly will be good for that. That's one of the new ones. If you have any questions or you would like to ask about something, please let me know because you are very quiet and this is scary. <laughs> okay, we have quite a nice butterfly in this set. Take one of the texture stamps to make it interesting first. It's the new edition of bubbles. What's it called? Uh, well, basically, I think it's bubbles. I know it wasn't bubbles when I started. There's no name on it. What's a shame. Well, in fact, I can tell you that was my uh, um, bathroom rug. So this is 
is the matte version. There's of course also this uh, glossy version of the same product uh, when you would like to have it more shiny and more visible. So now I just need to take another color and try to spray around it to change outsides and keep the butterfly purple. That was my plan. I made a similar video, it's, it's already online if you go to my website, which is finamar.com. On the left sidebar there is all this place where the social links. One of them is YouTube. And there are a couple of the videos, including the soft gels, explain also the very, very simple projects to do. And on the same website, there are all free tutorials three times a week. The uh, design team is posting in different kinds of projects, journals, um, then uh, scrapbooking pages, altered art, all these different styles, uh, eight people working like, every week. There's, uh, there are two new tutorials from them and one from me. And you can always refer to that as a source of information. So, okay, that should be. Thank you. It was spraying already, right? I'm not a patient person. I'm sorry. If it happens, Stop. <laughs>